Hello Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield Crown Tundra video here on iStarly TV. Today I'm going to show you how to get the Galarian birds in Pokemon Sword and Shield's Crown Tundra. These are Galarian Zapdos, Galarian Articuno, and Galarian Moltres. These are really really awesome additions to the game and they're kind of like new Pokemon in their own way because they have different typings, different moves, different stats, and different abilities than the original birds. So, of course, these Pokemon are only obtainable in your game if you own the Pokemon Sword and Shield Expansion Pass, which is $30. That gives you the Isle of Armor DLC and the Crown Tundra DLC. Personally, I think it's worth it, but it kind of depends on what you are looking for in the game. But, if you do not have the DLC, I believe you can still receive these Pokemon in trades. So, you can still have people trade you the Galarian birds if they have extra somehow or maybe if they're just being super nice um, you definitely can still receive these in your game even if you do not own the expansion but in, if you want to receive them in your own game you do need the expansion anyways um, what we're trying to do here is to kind of unlock the birds because they actually roam around the different uh, open world areas so that's kind of cool I'll kind of show you the the lowdown on all that you're trying to get to the Dyna Tree Hill. This is a giant pink tree uh, located in the Crown Tundra. So I'm going to show you how to get there just in case you do not know. Uh, we're going to start in this little village. This is a village that you access pretty early on in the Crown Tundra. And it's kind of pretty central to the story of the Crown Tundra. You'll see that I have a giant <laughs> Alolan Executor with me. The reason I, I have it with me, it's level 100. And it knows the move Sleep Powder. So basically I'm going to use this to help me capture the birds. Anyways, you're going to come down here, and I think from here, you're just going to want to keep going downhill. So just follow the path until you go down, 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 and you can see the, the giant tree in the distance, so that's a good reference point for you. If you kind of get lost, just look for where the tree is and try to go towards that. Okay. So, we have a little bit of an interruption here. I, so I already, I actually already encountered the tree, but I wanted to start the video to show you how to get there, even though I've already gone there. Um, I think it'll be useful for you. Uh, and you get this clue here that kind of tells you where to find the birds. I don't know if you can see, but my uh, Galarian Articuno is actually already there in the distance because I already started the mission with the tree so let's go ahead and save the game and this is kind of awkward sequencing but i'm actually just gonna go ahead and i am going to battle it i mean it's right here so with galarian articuno it's it separates into three different version of it, uh, versions of itself like as a mirage and then you have to find the right one um, it's kind of easy though. So basically you just crash into all of them and then it'll attack you. Ooh, yes, there we go. Okay. Now here's the thing about the Galarian birds. They are shiny locked, which means they cannot be shiny. So if they are ever going to allow us to have shiny versions of them, maybe they'll give them to us as events or something in the future. But anyways, uh, yeah, so this is awkward sequencing. I, I actually encountered a uh, Galarian Articuno. I could have just skipped over it and, um... And just gone straight to the tree, but I just, you know, why not? I mean, it's right there, right? So we're going to weaken it, and then after that, I'm going to start throwing Pokeballs at it, and then I will just go ahead and cut to when I actually capture it. Now, this is the tough part. It's a Psychic and Flying type. I don't want to go for another Giga Drain because I don't want to kill it. So I'm just going to go into my Espeon, and I'm just going to spam Psychic until it gets really, really low. And actually, my Espeon has Yawn, so that might actually help as well. So it has Psycho Shift. That's not going to do anything to me. Uh, honestly, though, it might just be one more Psychic. I'm a little scared because obviously I don't want to kill it. I did save the game right before. Okay. That looks like it won't kill if I go for another Psychic. But it looks like it's going to be really close. I'm just going to go for Swift here. Just to be safe. Uh, wow. Okay. Awkward. All right, I just skipped ahead here. Um, sorry to not show myself actually catching it, but here is, oops, uh, Galarian Articuno. It's a cruel Pokemon. It's a psychic and flying type, which is really cool. 
and its feather-like blades are composed of psychic energy and can shear through thick iron sheets as if they were paper. And as always, we're just going to take a look at how it looks following me. And this one's really cool. It's like it's like kind of elegant, I guess you could say. So there it is, Galarian Articuno. So you're going to go down past the old cemetery. Just like I said, just keep going downhill. And again, you're going towards the giant tree. I think that means you're going to veer a little more right as you're going downhill. But as you can see, we, we get to this point right here where there's some water. I think we're in the giant's bed still. The areas are a little confusing in the crown tundra, but uh, you're going to go into the water here. And again, you're going towards that giant tree. So just keep following that. If you're ever lost, just follow the tree gonna go downhill keep going more and as you can see there's some land up ahead you can go here there's an item but you know that's not important for the video you're just gonna get off right here and then I can't say this enough just follow the tree and it's very foggy which is kind of annoying but the tree is that way so you're just gonna follow the path in your game depending on like what day you're doing this or what time of day or whatever it might be you might be able to actually see the tree but I actually can't because of the fog, but that's fine. You just kind of follow this path all the way around. It's pretty straightforward. You could also, there's another option. If you go into the water, you also just follow that. So it's kind of hard to get lost, at least in this point, as long as you are following that big pink tree with a bunch of fat berries in it. And apparently you can actually battle Dynamax um, Greedent if you if you shake the tree or something like that. I haven't tried it myself, but here we are This is the Dinah Hill tree now when you're when you're coming here for your first time There's gonna be a little cutscene with the Galarian birds and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to show Myself doing this on the first time because sometimes Nintendo has some copyright issues if you show cutscenes from some of their games So I just wanted to be safe. So as you approach it, there's gonna be a cutscene the birds will appear and Rotom the Rotom decks will come up and kind of tell you what to do um, tell you where to go. So I don't know why I went to there. So so once you do that, your your key item will be updated with the birds. Now this does require you to actually progress a little bit into the story. Basically, you need to do the first couple of like mini missions. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. You can get these birds pretty pretty easily or or pretty shortly after you start the Crown Tundra. Um, and then what you're going to do is it tells you where they go. So the orange bird which is Zapdos went to the wild area the black bird which is Moltres went to the Isle of Armor and the purple bird went to the crown tundra so let's just go in order So I flew to the meetup spot here. This is how I'm going to find Galarian Zapdos. And with Zapdos, it's really fast. And you're going to see it in the overworld. And basically, you're going to chase it on your bike. So let's see if uh, Executor can keep up. Actually, I forgot. Sorry. Uh, your Pokemon don't follow you in the wild area, which is a little awkward. But anyways. So actually, it's right there. So you're, once you see it, you just follow it on your bike. And of course, as I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to zoom off. It's really fast. But even though it looks like it's way ahead of you, just keep following it. It'll let you catch it at some point. <laughs> I've already done this in my other file, so that's why. That's why I know. <laughs> Again, make sure you save the game before. If you haven't saved the game yet, you can totally... Um, there will be a point where it stops, and that's the point if you want, you can save the game right before. Um, the Galarian birds actually cannot be shiny yet. Or, or right now, they cannot be shiny. So, so there's no point in trying to soft reset to get a shiny. Um, but it's still important to save the game right before you battle it, just in case you accidentally knock it out or something. Although, if you do knock it out... Um, it will respawn somewhere else in the wild area. So don't worry if you accidentally knock it out. It, it's not gone forever. You will get another chance to catch it. All right, we're almost there. 
It's going to get tired soon, I think. I think in my other game, I battled it around here somewhere. See, my bike is a little slow. There we go. So it finally stops and right away. So so try to be a little careful once it is slowing down. If you haven't saved, saved the game yet, um, try to be a little careful. But like I said, if you don't save the game and you accidentally kill it, it's okay. You'll get to battle it again. So we're just going to start by Giga Draining. This is a fighting and flying type, so it will resist Giga Drain. And I didn't think about the fact that, of course, it is a flying type, so it's going to use flying type moves against me, which are super effective. But my goal here is to just get it as low as possible and put it to sleep with Sleep Powder. And of course at that point, start throwing Pokeballs. All right. So it's low now. Let's put it to sleep. That actually might do a lot, yeah. Let's hope this hits. Oh no, okay. Uh, I do have Yawn on my Espeon, so what I'll go ahead and do here is just start throwing Pokeballs. I, I'm just throwing a Timer Ball because it kind of looks cool. And maybe I'll catch it. Maybe I'll get lucky. No. Okay. So I'm just going to fast forward to when I actually capture it. Okay, we got it. That was that took a while. That took a lot of timer balls. I know I probably should have just been using Ultra Balls or something, but I personally like catching Pokemon in Pokeballs that look cool, that match them pretty well. So Zapdos, Galarian Zapdos is the strong legs Pokemon. When its feathers rub together, they produce a crackling sound like the zapping of electricity. That's why this Pokemon is called Zapdos. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Uh, it's a fighting and flying type, which is really cool. And it automatically gets sent to my box. And then you're going to get a little bit... Your your uh, a key item is going to get updated. And Peony is going to contact you. Sure, okay, whatever. I just want to take a look at my Zapdos. This one is... Looks like a mild nature. A rash nature, sorry. Okay, cool. I like it. Yeah, this is one of my favorite new Pokemon added in the Crown Tundra. Galarian Zapdos. So... That's how you find that one. Let's move on to Moltres. So Moltres is found in the Isle of Armor, and I actually just found it right now. So you can just fly immediately to the Fields of Honor, which is the train station where you kind of get first get to the Isle of Armor. And as soon as you step out, it's right there. So let's go ahead and follow it. Oh, it's going to go in the water. Okay, this is going to be tough. All right. The one thing about the water in the Isle of Armor is that Sharpedos just attack you. They, they just zoom right at you. They're really fast. So hopefully we don't encounter too many of those. I'm going to assume this is very similar to the Zapdos fight. Oh, please don't go over the hills. Oh, my, okay. Uh, I lost it. I probably could have gone that way, but I know that if you go that way, it leads to that cave. And that just kind of takes you somewhere else. So... It looks like I'm I'm doing a better job just kind of following um, on land. And hopefully we don't completely lose it. There it is. It's pretty fun that these are roaming Pokemon and you have you actually get to see them in the overworld. Because we've had roaming Pokemon in the past. Like, I believe the legendary birds are roaming Pokemon in Pokemon Platinum. And you don't see them in the overworld. And that's annoying. I'm sure eventually it'll stop, right? That's how this works, right?
Okay. So I finally cornered it. I kind of... So I basically made a whole loop around the whole aisle. And I was able to eventually corner it. And then I whistled at it. Because it looked like it was stopping. Well, it wasn't really stopping, actually. So I pressed the... I, I clicked down the left joystick. And it did look like it... it that got its attention. So maybe that's what you need to do. So I might have wasted all that time just following it around the entire entire Isle of Armor when all I needed to do was just whistle at it. So that's pretty annoying that my executor gets knocked out right away. Uh, Galarian's at, or sorry, Galarian Moltres is a dark and flying type. So that is going to be difficult to take down. Um, especially with my Espeon, because my Espeon does have Yawn, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and weaken it so we can see it in action, and then after that, I'm going to capture it, just like I did with Zapdos. Okay, it's got Sucker Punch, and because I'm at full health, my dual wing beat, I have Gale Wings, so my dual wing beat actually moves first. So if it's using Sucker Punch, that's actually really good for me because it means that I'm I'm negating its um, attack. But I, I did trigger Berserk, which looks like it boosts its special attack. I, I always forgot what that ability did. I know I know Drampa has it. Ooh, this is going to be close. Don't knock it out. Oh, God, that scared me. Okay, yeah. If I had knocked it out after all of the trouble I went through just to get it, that would have been really, really, really sad. Um... I like catching them in cool looking Pokeballs. I should be using Ultra Balls just because they have a higher chance, but I'm just going to use a Luxury Ball here. And now, like I said, I mean, I don't know how long this is going to take. Let's see. Okay, no. Yeah, I don't know how long this is going to take, so I'm totally just going to go ahead and fast forward until I actually have caught it. Yes, okay, cool. I finally caught it. That one was a tough one. Uh, Zapdos was harder to actually catch with Pokeballs, but Moltres was harder to catch by chasing it. <laughs> it was a lot harder. Okay, so Galarian Moltres, it is a dark and flying type, malevolent Pokemon. That's really cool. Um, this Pokemon's sinister flame-like aura will consume the spirit of any creature it hits. Victims become burned out shadows of themselves. That's pretty emo. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, this is something that I forgot to do, and that'll get updated. This is something I forgot to do with Zapdos, and I apologize for that, but I forgot to actually show it following me, um, and so I should totally do that. So that is how you obtain all of the Galarian forms of the legendary birds in Pokemon Sword and Shield in the Crown Tundra. They're really awesome, and if anything, I would say that they're all better than their original forms. Maybe Zapdos is arguable, but all of them are really, really good and, and pretty awesome looking as well. Great designs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please go ahead and leave a like as well as a comment letting me know which of these three is your favorite, whether in design or in competitive battling or typing or whatever the case might be. My favorite is probably Zapdos because it looks awesome and I just think it's really cool. <laughs> uh, but they're all really cool either way. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you think is your favorite. And let me know if there's other videos for the Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield Crown Tundra that you'd like me to do. I look forward to posting more content and hearing from you soon. So have a great day.